Yeah, if you could bring me another one of those frozen beverages, that would be great. Oh, hey, everybody. Casey Fatchett here, host of the Nerdy Photographer podcast. While you're here, be sure to subscribe and leave a review for the Nerdy Photographer on your preferred podcast platform. That would be wonderful. If you haven't listened to the show before, in addition to providing entertaining and informative photography and business-related information, I also go on adventures with the crew of the Starship Fibonacci. They're my hashtag nerdy photo crew. Right now, the crew and I are taking some much-deserved time off from saving the multiverse and relaxing at a highly luxurious Galacticus space spa. Snug, 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 snug. I agree, these milk baths are something else. Do we know what sort of animal the milk comes from, though? Uh, snug. Okay, I won't ask. On this episode of the podcast, I'm talking to Leandro Da Silva, who is a luxury wedding photographer. I've been a fan of Leandro's work for quite a while, and he actually lives pretty close to me, which is why this is the first in-person interview since before the pandemic. It's a you know, big thing, here, big deal around here. We had a great discussion about what it means to be in the luxury market, as well as developing your brand in general. It's a great talk. Check it out after the break. Golden, do not cannonball into the milk bath. Snug! Hello there, nerdy photographer listeners. Do you have a website or do you need one? Let me tell you, you should be using SiteGround to host your website. I used different hosts for many, many years, and I dealt with so many problems. Terrible support, slow loading speeds, all sorts of attacks on my site that I couldn't deal with. But when I switched to SiteGround, my problems have gone away. I haven't had to worry about my site once in the five years that I've been using SiteGround. And right now, you can get 80% off hosting and a free transfer of your website. Hosting can start from as low as $2.99 a month. $2.99 a month. That's so cheap. And it's so good. I wouldn't recommend it to you if I didn't use it myself. Head over to nerdyphotographer.com slash recommends slash site ground. That's nerdyphotographer.com slash recommends slash S I T E G R O U N D. Or you can click on the link in the episode notes and get over there. 80% off hosting and a free transfer. You're not going to regret it. But it's an F2. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I'm expecting what, yeah. it to be like, yeah. it's a zoom and like an F2 zoom. Uh, yeah. I'm expecting that to be, Kind of heavy. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, as long as if it's going to take other lenses out of my bag, yeah. I'm more than happy to like sit there and be like, "All right, okay, this is <laughs> this is okay. This is not. It's not. Uh, it's not like a 70 to 200 weight. Yeah. I mean, it's it's you know, it's easily like the weight of my 50 like prime the art lens. Yeah. It's about the same. Like a similar quality. Anyway, <laughs> as we keep talking here, uh, welcome to the Nerdy Photographer Podcast. I'm your host, Casey Fatchett, and I'm here uh, today with Leo De Silva, who's a wedding photographer. We actually, this is the first uh, in-person recording I've done since the pandemic oh, started. Awesome. So it's, uh, everybody else cool. has been virtual, so it's nice to have, have you here. Uh, you. Welcome. Pleasure uh, to be here. Yeah, we're going to start off. We're going to roll the dice and see what our dice breaker is for the it's a 19. Uh, what is <laughs> what is the best investment or purchase you've ever made in your photography business? Oh, um, best investment. Wow. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it would be a uh, piece of equipment. I think it's, you know, just uh, education. That was probably, I would say it would be the Jerry Jonas um, workshop that I went to uh, about like eight years ago now. And that, that was just a game changer for me. And I, I, I credit that as like, what kind of changed the way I photograph and has influenced the way I photograph. You know, and not, my work is nothing, you know, compared to his in terms of, you know, style. But I take a lot of things that I've learned from him. Um, and I implemented in my work today. You say it changed how you see photos. I mean, because like, I mean, like, I, like mm. you mentioned that, like now that that you say that, and I think about your pictures because I've been following you for a while on Instagram, yeah. like stalking you a little yeah. bit. Um, 
just because we work in, we, we live and work in the, yeah. like a similar uh in the same region um but that like now that i hear that i can kind of see that influence a little it's not like it's not the same style yeah. but i can totally i'm not trying to copy him or you no know. i mean like but it, i can see like the sort of like where that inspiration yeah like kind the of finessing the- you know like the you know the, the attention to detail you know um the finessing the, the the hands the the arms and you know just you know slowing down that was one thing that you know i learned tremendously with, with jerry was just slow down you know it's slow down and you know get your position get your light right get everything right and then engage and photograph and um because a lot of times you know i remember when i first started you know i i I never was an apprentice or i never second shot for anybody i never assisted another photographer um so everything that i did was all that i you know thought that was right right you know and and i went with my instinct (laughs) so you know when when i was looking i'm like all right i want to get better how do i get better you know Jerry Giannis his you know he just popped up everywhere and I just start I just I was attracted to the beauty of his work um you know elegant you know great posing lighting and I'm like wow you know how does he do this and that's how I just you know and I signed up for his five-day workshop in New York City amazing experience you know from start to finish uh it was long days um and um you know he just goes over everything from business to posing to lighting to client interaction to 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 everything um and what i got from the workshop was just you know the the technical aspect of like you know how to pose and 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 you know some lighting but it's really just and also how to engage with you know the couple or the model right. that you have in front of you um and it was so good that i was it two three years later i took it again <laughs> the same workshop and for for the second time, I I took it for a t- totally completely different uh, reason. I took it for the business aspect of it, mm. um, because at first, you know, I I pulled out you know all the stuff that I could, um, you know, for the posing and lighting and you know technical stuff, um, the detail stuff. I think that the, that part of that that makes a lot of sense because like, I think about when I started. Similarly, I had no experience with weddings. I had photography experience. I had been a professional photographer for a while, but I sort of like got into it. And so I was just sort of like teaching myself. And so I looked to other people to kind of like, where do I get this like technical knowledge? Because I think we, as creative people, we're generally drawn to like, okay, how do I do the creative thing? Yeah. How do I do the pictures? It's like first we sort of like gravitate towards, uh, I want to do like, how do I, you know, how do I get the lighting down? How do I get my, you know, exposures and my posing or whatever the things are. And then we don't think about the business until later yeah. on. And we're <laughs> and business tends to be like the last thing we want to do or think about, but is one of the more important yeah. aspects of this, yeah. you know, this business. So, you know, I guess we have big shout outs to Jerry for, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we love Jerry. Everybody yeah. loves Jerry. Um, so, Right now, I mean, are you, how you would classify yourself as, uh, in, I mean, it's on your Instagram and everything, as a luxury wedding yeah. photographer. And that's a, definitely a style. And I think that um, a lot of people who get into wedding photography think they want to be luxury wedding photographers because they think that it just means getting paid more money. Exactly. Yeah. But that's really not. Yeah. what luxury wedding photography is necessarily all about. Um, how would you describe luxury wedding photography? So you hit nail in the head. A lot of people think luxury, they think are automatic, like, oh, it's, you know, high-end weddings and, and people are spending, you know, a quarter million dollars or more. And, and that's not necessarily always the case. I exp- The way I explain it is it's the value. It's the value that clients see in your work, that brides and grooms see in your work when they book you. Um, they, they value your what you produce so much that they're willing to pay whatever you're charging, you know? And, you know, everybody has a price point, right? And, you know, some people might say you're worth it. Some people might say you're not worth it. And those, you know, those clients who don't feel like you're worth it don't value your work. And, and that kind of, 
you know, relate to anything, you know, in life, you know, <laughs> some people value a pair of shoes, right. you know, and they're willing to pay over a thousand dollars for a pair of shoes and other people don't want to pay more than a hundred dollars for a pair of shoes. And wedding photography is the same, you know, or photography in general. There's some people that see the value in, you know, it's not just a photo. It's not just a print. It's not just an album. There's more to that. You know, it's, it's that moment. It's that, you know, um, you know, you don't know if that person that you just took that photo with is going to be here tomorrow. Right. I mean, um, my, my parents passed away in 2020. Um, and one of the things that still, like, I mean, my wife and I, our wedding was uh, 11 years ago, but like those photos with my parents are some of the only pictures we have of, like of them together with uh, like the rest of the family and like everybody's good because my dad had been sick for a long time and like his, the, but that, moment even though it was 11 years ago they both are healthy everything's like it's one it's wonderful thing and i've done so many photos like i did a wedding in 2020 with uh, you know the the you know bride's father everything seems okay and then like six months later she called me and was like yeah my dad had a heart attack and suddenly like, and she was like, is it okay if I use these pictures in her, in his uh, memorial? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I don't yeah. care. Like, what can I print for you? Like, but it is one of those things that they, those are the, the things that people don't realize they value. And as photographers, especially wedding photographers, I find that a lot of photographers don't think to ask the questions in like a discovery call to find out of course, what people value. It's important to know that, but also they don't necessarily ask questions that make the client or potential client question what it is that they're not necessarily going to value today, but what they're going to value a year from now, two years, yeah. 10 years from now, because you get them thinking about those sorts of things and then they are willing to spend more money. They're like, oh yeah, this is something that I, this isn't, you know, I think the term got overused in our investment yeah. investment got overused for years there, like, because it just made it, I don't know, it got started to sound like a buzzword and cliche, but yeah. it is investing in the, your, the future memories yeah. of these things. It's something that I always say appreciates with value over time. Yeah. You know, yeah, you're paying, there's a dollar amount to this, but the money that you're paying now, you know, you're going to. It's going to be priceless, you know, in 30 years and, you know, you know, your, you know, your album, like the way you look in your 20s, 30s or, you know, when you get married, um, you know, you're not going to look, you know, everyone ages and, you know, it's, it's, it's the same, you know, and I kind of look at also like, you know, these boudoir photographers where, you know, they try to capture, you know, you know, women in, you know, in their thirties, forties, because, you know, you're not going to look like that anymore. So you want to appreciate your, your body and, and the way you look at that age. So, you know, get your photos done, get, you know, even the, even if we look at, you know, other, uh, portrait photography for kid photography or children photography, family photography, right. That's what it's, you know, all about. It's not about like, okay, yeah, your session is three, three fifty. It's like, you know, if you value it enough, we're like, hey, you know, I just want the session. I want to capture my kids. I want to capture the essence of my my child. So, you know, whatever it is, I love how you do it. You right. know, let's schedule something. Yeah, because it's something you're going to look back on in 10 years, 20 yeah. years, 30 years. And be like, oh, yeah, like, rem- remember that? And it's like yeah. these these things that we value, <laughs> you yeah, know, like you said, it appreciates over time. You're not just like... Uh, yeah, we the ter- and again another term that gets sort of overused in our inter- yeah. educate the clients. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's, it doesn't have to be like oh I, I'm going to tell you that you're going to like this you're going to value this a lot more. I personally find I don't know how you do it or what you do like this is it's sort of like gently leading them to it, especially in like a discovery call or whatever. It's like saying like hey you know think about this or what do you what do you think about you know like what is you know the first thing that you're looking forward to seeing when you get your photos back like that's a question i always ask because a it gives me a lot of insight into what their what's most important to them what they value the most but it starts to get them to like start buy into like oh yeah this is why photography is so important to me so they start to value it more in that conversation and then they're like a little bit more 
excited about the process. Yeah. They're, you know, maybe willing to spend more money because they feel like, oh yeah, this is going to, you know, this is going to be something that's important to me. And they might get into that sort of rut of I'm talking to five different photographers or however many different photographers. And I'm just going to ask my like six questions that I got from the knot or wherever yeah. that, and I just want to hear the answers and whatever kind of answer sounds like it's the best, but you break them out of that and start thinking about those value propositions. Yeah. And, and I, I started right with my, my inquiry form. So I, I ask him a couple of questions like, you know, who's most excited about your wedding? Who's excited about your wedding? You know, like that, you get a sense, you know, you, you know, if they book with you, you already know, like, you know, who is it without even, you know, them even realizing or thinking like, well, how did he, how did he know that, you know, my mom was the most excited or <laughs> my, my cousin was the most excited because I already had that information from when they initially inquire. And then um, I ask, you know, what do you, what do you like about my work? And that's something that I think a lot of photographers ask, but uh, I, yeah, I don't know that they do. Because yeah. Like, I, I, so uh, what I've, cause I, it's consistent. So what I get with it, it's they, 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 they describe the work. You know, that's what they like. They, they describe the work. So then I use that when I'm call when I have the call, the first call with them to, to uh, extract more. Because I think that question like, oh, what do you like about Mark or what attracted about my work? That's ev- everybody asks that. But you can mine it. Yeah. You can so totally yeah, mine so that that's for more what information. I, what I do. So, you know, the, the one about who's most excited, that kind of, I leave that on the side so that, you know, I can go back then and, you know, see, who, you know, who's the most important people uh, that, that in their lives. And then, you know, I mind that and I'm like, okay, so, you know, cause a lot of times it's like, oh, dramatic, but like, you know, which it, like, then I start asking them like, you know, once, you know, if they book, I'll start going into it where, you know, what do you like about it? Like, you know, they'll, they'll initiate and they'll send me photos of that I've done before. Right. And they'll be like, oh, this is the photo I love that it's the same menu. And then with me, I just, you know, on that and I'll tell them like, yeah, well, we can do similar photo. Cause I, one thing I hate is redoing a photo right. that I've done because I tell them like this is unique. My my goal to is them. to be different. Right, it's to, unique to, to that person. Different. It can inspire us. Yeah, in what exactly. shot you want, but we're going to create a shot that's you. Yeah, not we're not going to repeat yeah. that shot. We're going to recreate. We're going to create something new. It can be inspired by this. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, yeah. And and that's where it's kind of I I just start talking to them and one thing is to get them excited. And, you know, I was just talking to my friend yesterday, I had a session yesterday and he was helping me with, um, he assisted me and um, I was telling him, it's like, I've, and, and this is, it's mind boggling to me where I used to meet with everybody that I, I booked. And usually if I met with them, like 90% of the time, I would, I would book them. Yeah. So with, you know, the pandemic, you know, everything changed and it was all like Zoom, phone calls, emails. Um, and then um, I've... I, I was thinking, I'm like, the last time I actually met with a couple was May of 2020. Like, when we, everything kind of reopened again, yeah. I met with one couple, and then that was it. I have booked everything through, like, recently it just seems like everything is through through just a phone call. Like, yesterday I booked a wedding, phone call. It was literally, like, she knew what she wanted. She she just told me about her wedding. Like, she, she went, literally, it was like a 30-minute phone call. Most of it was all about, like, her details of her wedding, what she's looking for. And that was it. And then she's like, uh, just send me the contract. And I'm like, oh, okay. But that, okay. So it, it's a great thing. But then it's also one of those things where I, I like that interaction. I like to have them in front of me. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, you just booked a wedding in 30 minutes without even having to, you know, set up, you know, for for, for the meeting or, or anything. <laughs> and, and that's how it's been for me. And, you know, it's I'm grateful and because the clients, great clients, like I haven't had any issues with them. But it's one of those things where like I like to meet my couples. I, I want to show them the actual physical album. I want them right. to physically flip through the album. Right. You, you know, want I want them to see the wall art. I want them to see, you know, everything. So my goal now is kind of try to wheel everybody back. So when I deliver, you know, either, you know, hopefully like a do the reveal of the photos or the album design process, because I, I want to bring people back because it's, 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 it's one of those things where the initial, like I always tell people, it all starts with that initial inquiry. Yeah. So if you don't do it correctly in the beginning, you know, or you don't ask the right questions in, 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 in the, in the, uh, in the phone call and the discovery call, then it just kind of, it, that you can lose a client there. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, I mean, I did a, quick episode on this recently and uh i was out of the country and i had two inquiries on the same day and i was coming back like three days later 
And for both of them, I said, hey, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm out of the country. If you need to contact me, here's my cell phone number. Like I can get a text, um, but I don't have like regular access to email. One of them, I, I didn't hear from either one. I was like, okay. I, I had said that I would check back in when I got back in the U.S. Wrote them emails. One of them said, you know, we wanted somebody who was more available to us. I'm like, mm. I told you I was out of the country. I don't know how I could be. Any- <laughs> I gave you my cell phone number. I don't know how I could be any more available to you. Yeah. And the other ones were like, we're really super swamped with work. Um, check with us next week. We'll, you know, we'll set something up. I'm like, okay. So I did. I gave him a week. I said like, hey, hope things are a little easier now. Let's talk. They're like, yeah, well, we already hired somebody. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I was like, I always ask, why didn't, why did you hire someone else? Especially if I didn't get a chance to actually talk with them because it gives me more insight into like why people are making decisions. And they're like, well, we want somebody who would just leave us alone. And I was like, I I sent you two emails. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. But it's like that thing, like getting to that, like you said, it's all there in that first, those first interactions. Yeah. And sometimes even if you don't do anything wrong, it can go. Yeah, it goes against you, and you just have to like be like, yeah, it's this has nothing to do with me, nothing I did yeah. wrong. But like, there's so much in that first inquiry, in the first discovery call that you know has to do with whether or not they're going to make their decision. Whether they, yeah. you have to emotion again, emotionally hook them in. Yeah, with, and, and and I think it's you know usually most of my my inquiries are they they just book their venue, so they're 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 on that high. They're like, okay. I just, you know, we just booked our wedding yesterday, last night, you know, I'm inquiring because I already have my date, my venue. So I try to, and and this is something that I've learned very from the beginning. It's like, I get that email. I, 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 sometimes if I can get to it, like within the hour, I'm going to get to it, you know, or if it's come in, I'm going to reply to it because I, I, I've done it where like, if, okay, I'll reply to it later. Then it's like, then it's like two emails and then it's like, Mm -hmm. oh, I can't get it tonight. I'm going to get tomorrow. So what I try to do is try to get it right away. So Speed. that, you know, and that, and what I've gotten back from feedback, I was like, oh my God, thank you so much for replying, you know, so quickly. Um, or I'll get, oh, you're the only person that has like replied to me. Right. And, and I understand like, you know, there's some photographers might, you know, I understand it's a weekend you're shooting. You don't want to, re- you know, you can't reply. I even on, on, even when I'm shooting, like say on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, I'm going to try to reply to that at the end of the, 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 the night. Day. Yeah. Or, you know, or, or was you're at dinner. Yeah. Like, something like that. I try, yeah. Because I want to get, emails. because I, I learned that, you know, so this was what well, a couple of years ago, this is like four years ago. I was um, the per- 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 vendor at a venue, a big venue here in New Jersey, beautiful venue um, that actually it did a lot of high end weddings, uh, a lot of middle Eastern weddings. Um, which then I also found out that, you know, going back to that luxury, yeah. you know, you would think like it's a luxury place. The clients are spending all this money, all this luxury, but then their, 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 their value of photography wasn't there. Yeah. It's so, much lower. Yeah. Like some, I mean, that's a, yeah. They, so, I've, I've you run know, into like there, there are people who like, I'm willing to spend $15,000 on flowers, but I've got a $500 budget for photography. Yeah. And you're like, what? Yeah. So, anyways, th- this venue would would send out like a, a list of everyone that booked, but they would send out this list of possibly f- the, the, these people had booked their venue about 40, 45 days already. Past forty five days had passed. So I told you know the the the, the person that dealt with them like, hey, do you know that these people who who book your your venue, they book a photographer probably within days. So 45 days, they already have a photographer because right. their whole thing was like, hey, just send them an email or, or, or a letter or something. No. I'm like, it's done. Like, And I told them, like, it's done. Like, they, they've already booked somebody within the first, you know, days. And, you know, they really never never understood that. So I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to Thank you, but no, money. thank you. I'm not, you know, I, I just, you know, and we're still in good relationship. I'm not, I don't want to be a preferred vendor there at, at their venue. Um, so it was one of those things and cause, and I'm still booking weddings for there, but it's, you know, I don't have to pay their you know, commission. Um, yeah, and, that, that, uh, and then they, they added, they had another fee too, just to be on the list. They had a, a fee, which, which I'm, I'm totally fine with. Cause you, you know, in a sense, you're giving me, advertising. you know, great leads and beautiful place. But at the end of the day, I noticed those leads were not necessarily transitioning to, to bookings because they didn't value the photography that I 
Yeah, and I think that's one of those things that, like, I there there are things like uh, I mean, there's very famously Abigail Kirsch. If you're getting on the preferred vendor list, they have a commission fee yeah. or whatever, and like there are some other places that I you know that have it. But I most of the places where I'm a preferred vendor, it's like it's not a fee based yeah. thing, and there were a couple where they asked me, it was like, a, they were like exploring mm-hmm. like, let's, Oh, let's make people pay to be on the list or whatever. And I would tell them like, listen, I've been on the list that you already have. <laughs> and most of the time, the people who like contact someone from that list are like for your venue. I'm just saying like for you, it's not the place, not the case everywhere. And there's a reason it works for some venues and it doesn't work for other venues. Like they're not like, they don't want to spend money on photography. Like they're like looking for the cheapest route. Yeah. And so, that's okay. I always, there's, that's fine. You know, right. That's Otherwise like the people who are going to that venue are looking for a name in a magazine or a referral from someone else. Yeah. Like the people who are willing to spend money are not like going off of your list. Yeah. Like they, they are, they have a planner. Yeah, they, the planner they, works with with right. certain photographers, and right. that's who you know. And you know, and that's the thing. Like most of my, even my my referrals, like it's all Instagram, and you know, referrals of you know past couples, or you know now because I'm a preferred vendor at the 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 Pleasant Dale, that you know that also has has uh, brought in leads and and booking. So let's talk about this for a minute. Did you like so when we talked about like you know people wanting to be luxury photographers when yeah. you started out you were not what you would call a luxury no I, I was basically you know i i hadn't when i first my first wedding that i photographed it was like a low budget wedding it was like outdoor wedding on it was not even a, a, a tent wedding it was like a one of those big gazebos in like a state park um or you know and you know the girl asked me i think like less than a month you know from of her wedding she's like hey would you want to photograph my wedding i like the photos that you took of you know those babies and those baptism and those family <laughs> photos and i'm like sure like I- i've never photographed a wedding and i remember like i went online and i'm like and i typed in wedding photography because <laughs> i'm like what's this all about and i i saw you know i saw what they they posted like what was po- like the images that came up on google and i'm like ah you know it's it's bo-. like for me it looked boring you know so i'm like all right, uh, I could probably do something like this, but then I'm, I'm just going to photograph it the way, whatever, the way I photograph the other stuff, you know, and whatever. If, 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 if you know, I'm going to try to create something different, creative, because you can I have a fine art background, so I wanted to create something different. So I'm like, okay. So when he came, showed up, photographed, um, you know, the wedding, everything was in the same location. It literally, like, you know, there was no getting ready. So I did some photos of the bride by herself, the groom by himself. There was no first look, I believe, or there was, there was a first, first look. We did first look at, at on, on the field. And then it was a ceremony and the reception at the end of the night, she hand comes over, gives me a check. And I open up the check. It says 500. It, it, she had written 500 bucks. Like, is this good enough? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Sure, why not? Sure. And, you know, that was it. I delivered all her images. She loved them. And then I posted them on Facebook. And then I got my second wedding. And then <laughs> I think I charged, like, I don't know if it was, like, 800 bucks. And then the next one, I charged 900 bucks. And I just kind of constantly con- – I, I constantly tr- started improving. Like, I started researching other photographers and, and you know, what wedding photographer photography was – and what I found is, and then I came across like the fearless photographers. Um, I came across, you know, the uh, some groups in New Jersey, like Better Together, North uh, and Central Jersey. And just then being involved, surround yourself with other photographers and learning from, from other photographers and asking questions. Um, I started to kind of develop what I liked. And, you know, I'm, I was always big on, um, I, I love paintings. I, I, I used to paint. So I think that also kind of, uh, has influenced like my work now. That makes a lot of sense. Like looking at your work, like it, it just like hearing that I'm like, again, it's one of those like things that just clicks in going, yeah, there's a very, definitely a painter painterly style to how you light. Yeah. And how you like, just how you compose your yeah, images. I, I just like in my mind, like in my mind when I'm photograph or when I want to create like a portrait, like these creative portraits that I do, 
I have, you know, I, I look at a situation and I see what it can be. Like, you know, it could be a bright room, but I'm like, okay, what if I dim this? Like, you know, I underexpose this a lot. Right. Like, you know, and, and I start, and I, and I know how the light is going to, like, I, I want to, you know, how this is how I want her to, to look. This is how him or him and her or him and him or whoever, whoever it is. Um, and, you know, I just... I, I do it on the spot. Like some people ask me, like, "Oh, do you do you have like a vision board? Or do you <laughs> do you do you you know come up with ideas? Do you uh, something I always get from couples? Hey, do you do you actually go to the venue beforehand so you can scout the areas?" And I tell them, "Actually, no. Like, I'm I work better in a, in a new location that I've never been. You know, never photographed that because everything's is, is new to me. Everything it's very is, fresh. Yeah, it's fresh. It's like clean canvas." Um, not to sound cliche, yeah, yeah. But, it, it is. Um, but you know that's how I I, I developed, um, you know, and and you know just kind of taking that kind of the rena- like the Renaissance. That's like I love the Renaissance, the painterly uh, look, and just you know, I just appreciate you know, you know the fine art of 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 of, of a, a painting, and and I just try to create it in, in photography without being overly you know done in editing and look making it look like plastic dolls yeah um yeah i think that you can you really tread the line i mean i i love your work i mean yeah. it is not what i would pre- like take that we'll take that back we're going to rewind that um i think your photos are awesome that's why i reached out and wanted to like talk no uh you. it's not my style like and the thing is i find that a lot of people can like don't necessarily like go like oh I can appreciate somebody else's style, and I can see all of the things that go into your shots, and I'm just like oh, it's it's, yeah. it's it's great. It is like you know like everybody has. I'm I'm much more of a. I mean I shoot off camera, flash. I, I try to blend it more with like I personally am trying to blend more with like whatever yeah, natural yeah. lighting is going on uh, where I can. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, when I started out, I was stupid. I didn't know anything about lighting. I was just like, I, I had a couple of flashes cause I thought I'm like, I need them. Uh, yeah. But yeah. I just was like shooting ambient light all the time and not knowing how dumb I was. And, but then like saying, you know what? I need to learn this stuff. And I see so many people who are like, I'm a natural light photographer. Yeah. And I like, well, you need to have the skill like in your bag. You gotta know how to I mean, use it. You, you know, know you, if you, if you're in New Jersey Northeast, you get you know you're you're shooting every. But you're gonna have to accept weddings in the winter, like, right? Or you know, like you're gonna go into a room that's real dark. Yeah. And I don't care how good your mirrorless camera is, at like you know oh, high yeah. ISO, yeah. you're gonna get the colors are gonna be so muddy. Yeah. You know, you're not gonna be able to see. Like it's gonna you might as well just like I'm a, everything yeah. from the reception will be black and whites. Um, <laughs> I had a, a wedding once. In Guastavinos in the city. I don't know if you've ever been there. No. It's haven't. in the 59th Street Bridge. Okay. So it's in the base of the bridge. So, like, once the sun goes down, it is a cave. <laughs> it, it's really super, super dark. And the videographer for that wedding was it, like, I only used to like working Hudson Valley. Okay. <laughs> barn weddings, outdoors, lots of light. Mm. She showed up and she didn't have any lights. Oh. And everything was handheld. She was like shooting everything handheld, and I was just like, uh, "I don't think that you are gonna like what happens later in the day." <laughs> and she was like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "It gets dark in here." And she just kept walking by my second shooter and I, and like all night, and be like, "Wow, it's really dark." I'm like, "Yeah, it's it's really dark." Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that translates over to photography too. You need to have those things in your in your bag. But look, going back to what I was originally saying is like your shots are they have that there's the lighting is very specific yeah like it's like and i get that you go like that that the same even though we have a different mode of shooting i'm the same way in that i show up to a place and i'm like i don't want to sit there and be like we're gonna do this shot in this location and we're gonna light it like this whatever i would like i gotta see it the day of because who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, I've had too many people like going like, "We're going to plan this shot for this spot," and then you get there, and for some reason, the venue is like, "Oh yeah, like that we're redoing that part of the yeah. venue." Or, or it's a different time of the day, and, and it's like Light's super, terrible. yeah, <laughs> super like harsh light, like. And that's something I, I I've come across like sometimes couples like, "Oh, I want to take a picture in front of you know, let's say this building or this church." I'm like, or when? Or, or like, "Oh, I want to do family portraits like the basilica." 
right? Yeah. Newark, the huge basilica. So, yeah. you know, people are like, oh, I want to do pictures out in front of the church. I'm like, at the time of your wedding, when we get out, the like, sun is blazing <laughs> right above. Like, everyone's going to have raccoon eyes. You know, it's it's not going to be a pleasant, you know, and just, you know, people don't, you know, they don't see the, 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 the issues that the, the, you know, environmental issues that, that might arise. They just see like, oh, it's a beautiful church. You know, the time that I went there, it was shade yeah. and, you know, it was cloudy, it was cloudy <laughs> and, and it looked great, you but, know, and they tend to think, oh, if there's more sun out, it's b- you know, better, better, right? It's yeah, better yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, it's like, oh, it's sunny, beautiful. I'm like, like no. overcast is, 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 is amazing. I love you know, overcast, like overcast is amazing. <laughs> like, yeah, we all, you all, you want to have 70 degree weather all year. You want to have, you know bright sunny day but usually you know the sun is i like that mostly cloudy is yeah. much, right? no, mostly, like, cloudy. mostly cloudy like there's gonna get a lot of clouds yeah, over the we'll sun we'll get, we'll get a peak or so maybe, maybe there'll sun. be some blue in the background yeah. or whatever like that's fine. so you know and, and that's the one thing i think uh you know like you were going back to where you said being precise that's exactly what i want to do with lighting and because i remember i before magma so magma you know the great product they you know um with the grids and i remember i think it was rogue had the fir- like the what i saw was the first like gridded system for like the on, on camera flash or you know speed lights and i bought i remember buying them it was like this thing that took forever it's like a plastic piece that had like a I think um, I have velcro it. yes i have it downstairs in my and room. that's how i started <laughs> with because that's what i the tool that i found that could could was it control. a little metal like as a mini beauty dish, was it a, like a? No, I, it was basically a plastic grid, and then there was this Velcro like fabric that you would wrap around yeah. your flash, and then you put and 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 that that um that plastic piece would just kind of like almost like not snap, but like was being held because there's some. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! I know what you're talking about. It like actually fit over the yes. end of the flash head. Yes. And then you wrapped the thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because it's strap. I had also because it was also I think Rogue made it as well. I had like this mini beauty dish which I loved because it's only it was like eight inches. Okay. So I was like I could get like a further enough way. Obviously. Oh, and then you could put the disc. You put the disc on top. You could put a grid yeah. in it. Like I had like yeah. four different grids. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, oh, this is great. This yeah. Is so I, I found that like I don't. I don't know if it was like at B and H or something. I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, this is what I need, you know, because, you know, I, I was, you know, I try to, you know, like I said, I didn't work for anyone. I didn't, I didn't assist. Like I try to reach out to people when I first started, like after that first one, I'm like, oh, I need to like, I need to learn more. And, um, I try to, you know, bunch of people wrote emails, try to call one guy said, oh yeah, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll give you a call. Never called me back. So I'm like, you know, screw this. I'm going to do this on my own. And that's why I kind of like now, um, anybody that, you know, sends me an email or, or, or DMs me on Instagram, I reply back. Like somebody asked me, oh, what did you use here? You know, what was your, you know, what was your settings or what was, you know, how do you, you know, are these composites or, you know, I'm an open book. That's why I tell people like, I have no secrets. Like if you want to assist me, you know, I'm not going to just say yes. I'm going to ha- get to know you first. Gonna interview. <laughs> yeah, interview you, maybe, you know, bring you, you know, bring you for, you know, maybe, you know, invite you, you know, we can meet up and, you know, maybe we'll go to like one of these, well, you know, now they're back like these meetups and we could talk and then maybe, you know, bring you along in an engagement session. If that works out, then, you know, bring in the wedding. But it's one of those things where, you know, I'm, I'm open to, 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 to teaching other people because like I found like, and I find newer photographers are more open to doing that than like these older photographers that have, you know, the ones that say, oh, when I shot, started, you know, I was using film. Oh, you guys are, are so, e-, you know, <laughs> have it easy. And I, and, I started shooting film. I don't, yeah. Give me digital. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I've shot and, and, and what I, what I always tell people when they say that, like I've, I've, I've shot film, not, a, not a wedding. You know, because why would you want to shoot film when you can shoot digital and get the same similar results when you edit? You know, that's my, my, not my look. Right. But and you can't do that. I, I get that a lot, too, because, I mean, I started shooting film at weddings. I was still shooting film. I was, like, shooting a hybrid of digital and film. film. And I always say to people, why am I still shooting? Like, I would say to couples, I'm like, I can either shoot this. And they, they didn't have quite the faith. It was still early. I've been doing this for 22 years. Yeah. So it was like, there was still not the quite the faith in yeah. digital yet. And so they were like, oh, you know, we still want, 
like the film or we like yeah. the film look. And, and there's it. couples that still want it, and and there's some great photographers that still do it, and it, it looks yeah. it's great. It's like they shoot like a hybrid, like hey, and it, it looks looks beautiful. Like you know, you get both worlds, and you get the nice prints, and you know, yeah. but it's again, it's a preference. It's, yeah, and it's also it's so much more work, and I think that you have to decide as a photographer where you're putting the work in. Yeah. Like I would rather put the work in, and I think the case is probably for you. You'd rather put the work in on the lighting for the situation, like, and you can see with digital, like that your exposure is coming out the way that you envision it to happen. Yeah. With film, you're not you, getting that. You don't like, know. You have, even if you meter it and everything, like there could be something, something yeah. could go wrong, and you don't know if you got the shot that you wanted. Yeah. And also, you're not doing any compositing. Yeah, on film, like, no, it's yeah. like, <laughs> like it's, I mean, you could, but yeah, it would you take could, forever. but it takes forever, and but you know, all the you know editing and slides. But at the end of the day, like, a, like technology, that's one thing that has you know, technology has come around. They've <laughs> made you know, job much easier. Not saying it's the easiest because again, you know, you still have to put in work. You still have to. I think it's pushed the work into other areas. Yeah. Of the like, the, the, while it's made sometimes capturing the photo easier, now you have other areas where you need to be, think more about. You need to think more about yeah. your lighting. Think more about like you can, where you have the luxury. I guess yeah. is to sit there and, and think. Okay, I can spend some more time on you know my composition, my lighting, is, is instead of like just trying to only think about yeah. getting like. Th- the exposure, right? Yeah. yeah. When, when I'm doing like one of my, you know, dramatic, uh, photos, what I do is, you know, I want to get make the lighting, the lighting's the number one thing, get my ambient, get my, my off camera. And then I, you know, start working with the, with the couple, you know, cause the last thing I want to do is set the couple up and then have them wait, you know, and my right. goal is try to, you know, all right, let me set up my back. Like usually a lot of times when I like I'm at the venue, I'll set up the shop before even the couple's there. So let's say, you know, they're eating dinner. I'm, you know, at night, I'm setting up the shop. I'm getting my, I know where I'm going to photograph. I, I kind of have an idea what the what the lighting exposure is going to be in there. And then I bring them in. And then I'm like, okay, boom. And, and try to do it that way instead of, because I've, I've, I've seen it where it's like, where I've heard uh, that other photographers, they'll like bring the couple and then they'll set them up and then they'll try to figure out all their stuff yeah, in front of them while they're there. While they're there, they're, so I try to. Nobody wants to see the sausage no, getting made. No, so I <laughs> especially try to, when like, that part. I'm of all it. like, and that's something that over time now I'm I'm trying to be better at. Where just my time, like, you know, just and and I, I know this is like with these high fashion photographers and these people that f- shoot, you know, f- these famous people. Like, I hear them all the time. They're like, I have a minute. I have five minutes. To if I have five minutes with five, them. Yeah, so it's like. Everything has to be set already, and it, they just have to sit down in front of their camera, and they try to engage with that person, try to get the best expression or exposure that they can from that person, and boom, they, they take a couple couple shots, and they're done. They, right. this, you know. So I try to I, – I, 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 I forget who it was that was talking about that. And I, Craig Williams, maybe. I don't know. So and, and then I'm like, you know, immediately what? when he said that, I'm gonna I try. Of him. <laughs> I'm gonna. Tr- I'm gonna try to do that during the wedding day, like you know, because again, we're dealing with people who are not, you know, none of my couples are models, none of my couples are, are TV personalities, so they don't know how to, you know, be in front of a camera. So they always tell me every time they, they hire me, like I'm awkward. Like I'm like, if you look <laughs> at my, you know, my portfolio, or you look at my website, or, or you look at my Instagram, all those couples or, or have told me. I'm awkward or, mm. you know, I don't know how to pose or I don't like this or I don't like that. And, and my goal is to make, and I, and I say this, and this is a, I, I, I took this uh, from uh, Jerry where he says, my goal is to make you look as beautiful as you're ever going to look, you know? And, mm. and people are like, oh, wow. Like, yeah. I think that one of the things for me, it's a matter of like, you know, I feel people who feel awkward and it's very similar. I tell people, I'm going to make you look relaxed. Yeah. I'm going to make you look like you're, comfortable and and you're going to feel comfortable and natural. that's what's going to get us to that like i get there a different way but it's the same sort of like i'm starting to tell them like look you you might feel awkward and and what kind of puts them at ease i'll show them the photo i'm like look look at this see how how and that's something i i show them right away like when i first photograph them i i show them photos so they can yeah it helps them yeah Yeah. and i think that for what i think is happening there i think is different it's a different way to assemble people feeling Mm mm-hmm 
really confident about what the the product is going to yeah. be. And like for my clientele, it's usually people who want a natural look to things. They yeah. want things to look yeah. like natural, true to life, whatever. And in that instance, they want to feel like they're comfortable in the situation and that they're being themselves. But I think for you, what you're saying is like, it's a matter of like, I'm making them feel comfortable in my skills yeah. to make you look good. I'm not going to make you look bad. Yeah. And I think that's what it really comes down to is like assuring them that like, listen, this is going to look good. This is going to look good and we're going to get there and you can feel confident that it's, that that's what it's going to be. It's yeah. going to be great. And I wanted to take this, like, this is a good segue point though. Like for you, I think you call them your, your signature. You've been calling them dramatic images. Yeah, dramatic signature. signature. Signature style, which is like a lot of what you show on yeah. like Instagram and stuff. Like, like my bridal party photos. That's yeah. where like, like everyone that, every one of my couples are like, we got to do one. Like, right. and I have some couples that are like, all I want is one photo of my bridal party. And that's just the one signature and, and, photo. And that's it. And, and, and that's exactly what, like, I'll do, you know, I'll say, hey, we'll do, you know, let's get, like, natural light. Like, hey, everybody together. Hey, everybody looking at the camera. Everybody looking mm-hmm. at each other. Like, but then, you know, but then that dramatic, you know, signature shot is what all of them want. I right. think, you know, if if I don't do it everyone, it's probably, like, 90% of the weddings. Um, um, again, if, if I don't do it, it's, it's because either, like, time and the couple didn't want it. But even when we don't have time, my couple... My cops are like, no, we're going to make time. Like, they, they, they'd rather be late. And I'm like, yeah, but the maitre d' just wants you to. It's like, no, we want this photo. Because it's it's not, and this is, and I educate. And that's where I I um I wanted to go for, uh, I wanted to talk about before was educating the client on the time that you need. Right. You know, um, especially, you know, weddings are very unpredictable. They're predictable and they're unpredictable. Because you can, you know, you can predict what's going to happen. But then in, in terms of timing, timing just seems like, it flies. Like sometimes you think you have all the time in the world and then you look at your watch and you got like 10 minutes. So what I tell my couples is these bridal party photos, you know, these composites, these signature photo that I create, it's not five minutes, you know, it takes me just five minutes or, or just to kind of set everybody up. And, and right. you know, and I tell them like each of these photos, maybe it's 15 minutes from start to finish from me getting everything set up, like the background, putting everyone in because I do have like some of these bridal parties. I have like sometimes 40 people. <laughs> They're you know? huge groups. I, They're huge I groups. I do not envy those. Like, and, and, and when I get like a, a group of, of eight or 10, I'm like, oh, this yeah. is so nice. <laughs> but like I have these big groups. So it's like, it's not just dealing with one person. It's dealing with now people who might be, you know, rowdy, drunk. Yes. You know, the more not, people, yeah. the more likely that you're going to have some sort of wild yeah, card so factor. It's trying to make sure everything is set up and then if they can listen for a little bit and having them, you know, hold a pose for a few seconds and then having my assistant go around and let each individual person right. and then making sure that like, okay, nobody, like out of these 40, nobody's blinking. And so, you know, like, okay, just re- reshoot that. Cause, and, and that's why sometimes if, if I'm not sure, I'll just reshoot it because, and it takes 15 minutes for that shot. So I let them know right away, hey, we need 15 minutes for this one photo. Right. And manage the expectation. Yeah, exactly. And because, and that's where I find like a lot of wedding photographers, though, yes, couples are increased to death, even if they know they can't do it or that's not something they like to do. I'm very honest. Like, if, if, and I, I don't, I think I, like, I'm a firm believer you attract of what you post. Right. So, I only post what Absolutely. I want to attract. Right. Like you don't see any details. You don't see any family photos. Like if you see a family photo on my, my Instagram, I think I posted one a couple of weeks ago. It's in the style, my signature right. style. So if you want a family photo, I'm going to do your family photos. You know, I'm going to do all your traditional like mom, dad, I'm looking at the camera bright, you know, everything is, is well lit. But then what I'm going to post is what I want to want you to hire me for. Right. That's one of the best lessons I think I learned from the business aspect of it is like, you know, my friend Spencer Lum, who's like brilliant at marketing. And he's like, you know, you don't like doing these shots. Stop posting yeah. those photos. Fo- Stop posting the photos that you don't like to take. Yeah. Like, because you still might have to take some of them, but you're going to attract less people who are yeah. interested in only those pictures. Yeah. Um, which is why, like, I've, sort of there are some there are some detail things that i love uh that i re- that's why i post them but like for the most part i'm posting pictures of very like natural reactions yeah these ve- these moments that are very emotional 
Like it's either, you know, laughing, crying, whatever. Th- those are the things that I want for my clientele. Yeah. I want like, and for me, those are the things I love yeah. to get. This is what we're doing. Even if it's a portrait, it's a very natural. So I'm, I, that's and it what's, could change. Like, yeah, like your I, style I, can evolve. Yeah. And that's what I'm always, I'm trying to evolve. But the, like, I, like, if you go back, you'll see some, like I'll, I'll once in a while I'll throw in some emotion, you know, emotional photo, you know, a, a candid emotional uh, photo. But then, you know, I've noticed over the years that these signature photos are what's brings, driving business. We're driving my business. And, and I want that type of client, you know, I want that client that appreciates what I can do because the first thing, like one of the things that, you know, that they say when I, you know, in that um, inquiry form where, you know, what do you like by my work? And sometimes I, it's just different. It's different. And at this point, they've probably seen my website, which is not updated, which is not, you know, the best place to go. Right. But my Instagram is a good feel of, you know, the style that I'm known for. And then what I do when they inquire, I send them full galleries. I send them like 20 galleries. So they can go in through every single gallery at, and get a good vibe of what your wedding right. gallery is Expectation gonna is going to be. Because I think that's one of the, like you are saying before, like managing expectations for those, like for how long that shot is going to take to produce. Like that's, yeah. that's one of those things where like, you know, I, I've... I've been in a wedding party and I like where like <laughs> good friend of mine and I was in the wedding and they were considering hiring me and they decided like, you know, no, we want you to be in the wedding. And I was sitting there watching this person work and it was taking forever, but they had told him, Oh, this is only going to take like, Oh, don't worry. We got to bring the whole wedding party out. It's only going to take like 30 seconds. Don't worry. <laughs> and it's just like taking like, we were like five minutes into it. And I'm like, and, and, my friend whose wedding it was, was like looking over at me like, did I make the wrong decision? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Maybe the, the photos might be great. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. but I can't say anything. But then all I can say is like, you're not really like yeah. managing expectations amongst your clients. Like I had, I always think back, there's a wedding I did, which I would call it, uh, a, we're about to wrap up here, but it was like yeah. a very luxury wedding, but in the city. And we talked about what, the photos were going to be we had like multiple meetings about like what they wanted and what it was going to what the end of this the end product was going to look like and of course we get to the wedding day she's got a big bridal party lots of bridesmaids who want to like have their input into like what the photos should look like and we've got you know like 20 people and one of the bridesmaids says oh you know what we should do because we're in like this very like luxury it's very similar to like the library at pleasantdale um it's kind of a luxurious looking room very like yeah like lots of uh furniture um but there were a lot of mirrors in it and this one bridesmaid goes like you know we should do we should do like a vogue cover (laughs) shoot type of shot like with where we're all and i was and i stopped i said let's stop right there um yeah i could potentially do that but I don't have the people to pull it or again, or the time. Like we've got five minutes before ceremony time. Like this, that's going to take 20 minutes. And and that's what we've also got to understand, like where, you know, what takes precedent, like, you know, my goal is always for the couple to enjoy the day. Like I, I, and and this is something I, I'm, I tell them from the beginning, your wedding day is not a photo shoot, you know? Yeah. We're going to take photos on your wedding day, but you know, it's a lot of it is all on the run, and that's what I love about wedding photography because it's, it's you're you're under pressure, you're, you're there's time constraints, and you have to produce all this you know stuff as as it's going on, and and sometimes you got five minutes, sometimes you got ten minutes, but all you can do is set the expectations, right? You know, and and what I do with my brides. You know, from the start, like I, I right away start initiating, uh, uh, you know, hey, what's that? This is how the itinerary is going to look. I need this amount of time. I always try to schedule two hours for bride getting ready. Right. Hour for the groom because you don't need that much time for the groom. <laughs> two hours for the bride because already in my head I'm figuring, you know, I work with some great makeup and hair people that are on time. But then sometimes they're, you know, you get, you know, recently I had, a, uh, I told the bride two hours. I, I had uh, 15 minutes with her. Right. You know, but it comes to down to she knew that. So like, you know, when she sees her gallery that she doesn't have all what she normally sees, she knows it's because I missed, you know, that, that the, she didn't the schedule. Late. Yeah. yeah. It's not um, your fault. It's somebody else not managing yeah. the time. And, 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 I, and that's what it is. It's, I'm really big on that because I think that avoids, 
you know, we see it too, 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 too many times where clients are upset up with their wedding photographers for whatever reason. And it all comes down to communication. I think either the expectation, the photographer didn't set the expectation or the client didn't do enough research or ask the right questions, which I, I try to avoid the client having to ask me the questions and I tell them everything. Right. You know, I ask, um, questions, I ask a lot of questions and people are like, Oh yeah. So like when I have given advice to people, I'm like, I have a whole questionnaire. Yeah. Like once people have booked, I've got a long list of questions that I ask and they're like, well, why do you ask so many questions? I'm like, because you need those answers. Yeah. You need, because they're not going to necessarily think to say, Oh, Hey, by the way, like, for example, one of the questions I always ask, are there any relationships or is there any tension yeah, at family, between people yeah. that I should know about or special conditions like somebody, you know, like has mobility issues so that I know when we're picking a spot that we can't pick yeah. a spot where they got to go downstairs like, or, you know, like, yes, these two people don't get along, but they get along well enough that they can be in a photo together, exactly. like in a group. But don't and clients to, appreciate that. And but clients don't try are, to put yeah. them together. Yeah, like, yeah, clients love that. And that yeah. gives you... Like, you're, you're thinking of like, oh, you, you know, nobody, like none of my other, my, my videographer didn't ask me that. My, my you know, band didn't ask me that. Right. The venue didn't ask me that. So it's one of those things where I think communication and in, in anything and in, in relationships and in, in any, per, you know, professional, personal, it's, it's, it's a key, you know, from the beginning. And, you know, not like, and this is what I, I've said, not trying just to, book a client to book a client just to get another wedding right but because i find you know that could be very risky because you could get to a point where like oh i booked this client but we're not the right fit right or, or like i don't think we're going to be a right fit but i just want to book them because i want to i want to shoot at this venue yeah you know i've made the i've made a few of those mistakes like i even i would say in my you know not just the beginning of my career where I was like, there were times when like, it was uh, this year's a little slow. I'm going to not, I'm not. And I totally get that. Like, you know, seeing the, I'm not, I'm, I'm choosing to ignore the red flags. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, But I would say like, I I was 99% of my clients. I have a very, at least good interactions with, I would say like very, very good with a lot. But I think that's because of asking those questions during discovery asking those questions after they've booked and finding out like showing an interest in them beyond the check. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a big, yeah. um, <laughs> and they know, and people notice it. They, yeah. they notice it. They, uh, if you're taking an interest in them, yeah, they, they will immediately like, because first of all, everybody likes when someone takes an interest yeah. in them and, and it's, you know, you're not just like uh, brushing them off. Like, okay, well, I got the, I got that uh, contract signed and I got the, the retainer and uh, yeah. I'll talk to you in six months yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that's what, you know, I find that a lot of people deal with. Like yeah. it's not just with photographers, but like, it, that all sorts of vendors and weddings disappear yeah. after they get that contract and the retainer and the, or, you know, their deposit or see you in a year, <laughs> see you in a year when you're wedding. Like I, I'll talk to you like a month before your wedding. And it's yeah. like, okay, so I don't exist. Otherwise I'm like, I'm always checking in with yeah. people. Yeah. Same to me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, to make sure that the, uh, we're still on the same page. That's why I, I work with that itinerary from the beginning. Like, and, and I tell them like, look, this might, this is going to change, you know, cause you know, certain things, you know, that you have to even, you know, if, like say the venue gives them two options for start of cocktail hour, so right. or ceremony or the church. So I said, you know, as, as as things change, send me an email. Hey, this changed, and then I'll I'll check in with you. Hey, is everything good? Do you need help, or you know, is there anything I can assist, be helpful with? Um, yeah, I think that, that that's sort of like you know, I always tell people like we're not going to nail down the itinerary until probably like a f- couple weeks, few weeks before. Like it's not going to yeah. be like solid, Final, yeah. but we're going to start talking about it. Yeah, exactly. Earlier on, so that we have a sense yeah, of what the day is going to be, and, and set the expectation of right. like, hey, this is how much time you need. And and I had something similar happen uh, where a bride, um, a couple months before the wedding, she tells me, hey, we're not going to do, we're thinking of not doing the first look. So I just, you know, because it was all in the same location, so she wanted to, you know, um, just walk down the aisle, and that was going to be the first time they saw each other. Right. I'm like, that's fine, but we're not going to have any time for portraits. You know, like, you know, I we can definitely do 30 minutes of cocktail, but I need 30 minutes to set up my lighting. I got to photograph your details in the room. I have to do other stuff. So we can only 30 minutes and 30 minutes is not going to be enough to do a bridal party, family, 
and you know portraits of you guys of, of what you, you, you want, see what yeah, you want and what you hired me for um and she's like oh you're right um is there anything we can do like i'm like we can do you know your side of the family photos like you and your your family and he can do what we could do with his side of him but at the end of the day like you know, it's a wedding. It's right, between you, you two. To, right. It's like, do you want this You want to join. Like, usually I always take, like, I always, and this is something I always tell my couples, like, all the photos I take is always a bride and a groom. Even if I do your family or his family, I always do it both. Yeah, once in a while I get, you know, a request, hey, I just want to do just with my family. And, you know, I don't know why. Like, I don't know. Sometimes, case, it's, just, sometimes it's just yeah. like siblings. Like, yeah. They want to do like, the, oh, like, oh, oh yeah. Just yeah. like the, you know, siblings and parents, whatever, just yeah. the, the, that group. Like, but do both. Yeah. So like, I, I get it. So I said, we can do that. But all the other stuff that, you know, the signature photos, maybe we could get one or two or something, you know. And she's like, oh, I'm like, and, and then I that's where I tell, like, you know, remember the, the bridal party photo takes, you know, at least 15 minutes for us to do. Right. Bringing them back. In the, yeah. So not- she's like, oh, you're right. All right. Ne- never mind. I'm going to, we'll, 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 we'll have the first look. Right. And so I, I brought her back. So like, you know, she booked me knowing that she, and then. Mid, you know, more Middle than midway waves. through, she's like, "Oh, we're gonna change it," and I'm like, "Okay, that's, that's not fine. a problem. Just let you know that this is the expectation that we set was, and you know, have her had her think about it. She's like, "All right, we're gonna do it. I'm just gonna let you know, so and so, I mean, her fiance know yeah. that we're gonna do the first <laughs> look, and it was great, you know. Um, and, and I've always, you know, and I think having that communication and having that. Now, let's say I did never told her that from the beginning. She's gonna be like, "Hey, you never told me." I thought this, you know, you could do these photos. It doesn't matter. You know, you only need 10 minutes to right. do everything. Right. You know, and that's where I think, and, and not that I, I think I know that a lot of, and, and it's not just photographers, it's video people or anybody in the industry, which they don't set the expectation because they're so excited either by shooting the venue or they want to get the booking or, right. and I've learned that. They don't want to say no. Yeah. And there are ways to say no without saying no. Yeah. And I think that they're afraid to like, I'm going to, I'm not going to get the job or they're yeah. not going to be happy with me. There's ways of doing that without. Yeah. And I understand some people are in certain situations. They, you know, they got bills to pay and they need to have the <laughs> bookings. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, are you going to create more of an issue for you by taking on a client? That's not the right person. Red, yeah, red flag. I see it all the time. And, and, and I think the way I think now is because I think in the beginning when I first started out, not that I had personally any, but I saw other photographers like being part of these groups. Like people go on online, hey, I got this client that's like, you know, saying this to me, saying that to me. Or, hey, I I was, you know, talking to another photographer the other day about like, you know, people sh- shooting on one card and like not having backups <laughs> or shooting one camera. And I'm like, I've, I learned all that, you know, I'm thankful. I learned that in the beginning because I was in these groups and, you know. Some of these groups you see, you see everything. Yeah. Um, like some of the stuff, like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And, and you learn from that. And I was fortunate enough, not that I was, you know, I would love to have to assist somebody or help somebody and kind of learn the game. But I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't because like I developed my own kind of style. Because like I tell people, like, people are like, oh, who are you, you know, I'm like, I'm actually, like, I don't, like, if I see, I never try to copy a photo. Or like if I see, uh, 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 you know, if I've seen a photo photographed at a certain location or a certain way, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to copy something. Um, or like, you know, once in a while I get a client, look, I like this photo. I'm like, okay, we can do that photo. I'll just make it, you know, it'll be you, it'll be unique to you. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just like the location or whatever. Right. So that's fine. Um, but I'm always about making it different. And that's what I tell people, like, this is a job, you know, <laughs> this pays bills. But at the end of the day, I really love what I do. It's it doesn't feel like work. Like on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah, I'm away from my family, but it doesn't. It's not work. Like I actually enjoy like creating these these photos and and, I, and editing. Yeah, for me, the the wedding part of it like is the best part. Like, yeah. and the interacting with people that's the fun part, yeah. which is what was really hard about the pandemic was like I wasn't getting to like yeah. that. Energy. That's why with me, like I, I haven't met with a, like it's great that I'm booking these quick, you know, like. Well, no effort right but it's like i want to yeah i want to stop for like 45 minutes an hour come by you know we'll sit down at a table i'll show you my albums we can look at what we can you know it's just usually i don't know if it's the pandemic has has trained people has conditioned people that hey you know we can we, do this we can do this way. yeah another way where i don't have to travel to you um but 
you know, it was weird for me before before the pandemic, and bef- like I had, and then, like I, I stopped renting it out. I had a space in Manhattan that was like my meeting space. You know, people would come in, we'd talk. They would, you know, like see the art on the walls. They would go through albums. And I was having trouble getting before, like I'd say two years before the pandemic, having, getting people to even come in for the meetings. No. They were like, I just want to talk on the phone no. or via email. And now it's like, there's still a, like, there's some generationally, as we yeah, get there's there, a, yeah. there's, there's a disconnect on like wanting to have a phone call. Yeah. Um, they brought their text. Right. And that's, you know, like... I, Not too far along, it was, it was considered unprofessional. Yeah, texting was like, yeah. why are you texting me? But like, yeah, well, this is how you prefer to communicate? That's fine. Yeah. And that's one of those things I ask. How do you prefer to communicate? Yeah, uh, what's the best way to like, reach you? Like, what's What are you most comfortable with? Um, but yeah, so I like ended, like, part of me feels like I dodged a bullet. I ended that lease on that meeting space because I was like, People don't want to come in. Yeah. We're going to do like video meetings because I was doing like FaceTime and, and other stuff because, because it, people were no, before the pandemic. Oh, okay. Even before. Okay. But like a year before the pandemic and like, like people want to do like FaceTime or whatever because they were like, I'm really busy and like, I don't want to have to like come in, you know, to a place and like, I want to be able to be comfortable. Like I had made this meeting space comfortable because that was one thing that yeah. I want people to come in. You can have, here's a beverage. Do you want a soda? Do you want water? Do you want tea? Yeah. You know, like whatever we can, you know, make it really nice but like they wanted the comfort of their own home and so i was like okay so i was like i'm not reusing the space anymore i'm gonna end that lease and then like a year later like the pandemic hit and i was like i'm really glad i ended that lease um but yeah like finding the ways that you connect with people like i i want that connection too like i really i would rather have that in-person meeting because then you again learn more about people you develop that connection you are able to manage expectations, I think, better in person yeah. than, and also like get people interested. Like touching the album yeah. is such a, like, we, I, I'm sure this is experience you have. Like, when, when people are like, I don't know if I want an album, and then they pick up an album, and they're like, yeah. I want an album. But, yeah, they see how heavy it is, or they flip through it. Like, I, I remember, yeah, even like a couple sitting in front of me. And then she's like, oh, I, I like this. Yeah. I, I want one. Like, oh, really? Yeah, like, this is yeah. nice. This, I like this. Yeah. All right, so I think we need to, we're going to wind up a little bit here. So right. as we get there, like if you had, if somebody's looking to get into the luxury wedding market, what would be your advice to them? Um, from what I've seen, a lot of people who are in that in that luxury market or what people consider higher end market is they do something different. You know, they, 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 they make their work stand out either through, you know, the way they photograph or is it like an editing or is a style? There's something different because if you look at all these big time photographers, there's something about their work, you know, and, and, you know, I consider myself like, you know, a normal photographer. Like I don't consider myself, you know, better than anybody. I, I always say I'm always learning, you know, I'm always trying to learn and, 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 you know, uh, figure it out. Well, like you look at some of these better well-known in the world photographers, like wedding photographers, you see that their work is different. There's something about their work and not sometimes you can't put your finger on it. And it's, you know, yes, it's, a, it's about, you know, having everything kind of lined up and and they do everything pretty good. So, you know, the business aspect of it, the shooting aspect of it, the client interaction, you know, business out, out of it, uh, part of it. But it's it's one of those things is find what you like and work on it, you know? Cause I find a lot of photographers, like I, I know this one guy, he's, he wants to shoot these high end weddings, but then he's shooting things that are not necessarily considered high end. Or if a client, this is what I've noticed with one, one, one of my, um, uh, photographer acqu- acquaintances. He, he's like, Oh, he wants to shoot at better venues. He wants to shoot at these higher end venues. But then I'm like, you know, how you got to put yourself on, in the shoes of some of these people. What do they like? Right. And what, what are, are the things? Where do they shop? And what are they seeing? Yeah. What, what do they shop? What are they seeing? And then because the thing is, they're like, oh, I'm getting inquiries. All right, good. So there's some interest in your work. But then where are you losing them? Are you losing them in the conversation? When they're talking about Louis Vuitton or they're talking about Hermes or they're talking about 
if you know nothing about it or if you haven't, you know, and I tell them like, you don't have to actually purchase anything. If you just go into the store and have that experience of how you were greeted yes. or, 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 or how does it feel to be in there? So maybe you can put yourself in their shoes and see how it feels and how they want to be treated. You know, how is it, how, how does it feel like when you walk into to, to Louis Vuitton, you know? How do, you, do they walk in when they walk into your office? This is what we call brand experience. Like, what is your brand experience? Like, and this yeah. is such something, that especially when it comes, I did an episode, if you want to go back and listen to a brand strategy episode a couple episodes ago, or, um, but it's very much about like, you need to understand like recognizing behaviors, behaviors and what, what people do and how they are treated by a brand, how things are presented. So if you, yeah, like you're saying, if you want to be a luxury brand, you need to understand luxury brands and how they like make people feel and how they, the, even like words they use, exactly. like, like, you know, what is the feel of this? Like, and then like, yeah, what, what's the, in the, in the parlance of our times, what's the vibe that you get yeah. uh, from yeah. this and it's brand? Like, and, and it could be a word simply as, you know, package what are your packages what are your collections collections yes and that's the thing you know? like, you know, like you can't just slap luxury the word luxury onto luxury it and package then, right like a luxury collection yeah no no i mean like you can't or, say like, i'm a luxury photographer oh. so now i'm going to start charging yeah. more money no. you can't just slap that on you know your business well, and like and, all and, and it's like another thing that that a lot of people use is you know the word image compared to photo right photo has a tangible uh, component to it, right? Image is a digital file. Right. So like when someone just gets digitals, the value, they don't see the value. You know, it's, it's right. like a digital, when they talk about photo, it's, it could be, it's a print, right. you know, it's an actual, they, they feel it. They, they, there's something physically there that they can hold. And that's something like with all my couples, they all get an album, like, you know, I offer three collections and they all get an album and they all get credit towards, wall art so that then so they can see the value because when they 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 you know when they used to meet with me <laughs> yeah, they see um, they go like oh i get money yeah, towards this this okay. is what i this is what i get so like wow it's like you know when they go into a store at their favorite store that they shop at luxury store they you know they have the nice you know if it's infused water it's bottled water you know they're not I, you know i don't hand them um i remember i used to I, I, I wouldn't have like Polar Springs. I had the, um, uh, the glass uh, vase yeah. water. So okay. it's a little, you know, it's, it cost me what, like a dollar more. So, the, but they're, they, I'm offering something. I'm el- trying to elevate You're, their experience. Right. And that's, that's, I think, something that everything that we've discussed in this interview, it's the experience that you have with, you know, who you're working with that shapes the like it shapes the, your reactions to it and you're willing to spend more money for a great experience yeah like you're it's not just the like the images are really important but like we've said you know lots of people can take great images like it but it, what makes it a luxury experience is how you are treated you know, throughout the process, it's not just like I disappear and I, you know, yeah. and, and I'm gone. For like after you sign the contract, I am checking in on you. Yeah. I am finding out how you are doing outside of just wedding planning, and like that's what makes you feel taken care of. And this is I what know makes, your name, right? <laughs> it's a concierge experience. It's one of the, yeah. concierge is another one of those luxury words. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that it makes people feel more important. Hey, photographers, have you noticed how the life goes out of your subject's eyes when you tell them how to pose? You say, stand there, put your arm like this. It gets even worse when you have subjects who are a bit shy or introverted. If you want to create authentic, emotional photos, my Let's Be Real unposed photography prompts will help you create interactions that your clients will remember when they look back on their photos for years. I've developed my unposed photography prompts over 20 years, taking pictures of people using my own self-conscious nature to help my clients who felt that they were unphotogenic. From couple sessions to weddings and family portraits, these prompts will help you get more dynamic and natural photos with your subjects. And right now, you can get 25% off if you use the code POD25 
P. That's pod, P-O-D, 25P, all uppercase. Just go to nerdyphotographer.com and find the prompts in our store. Stop posing and start prompting. Hey, hey, hey. And now for my favorite part of the show. What's that say? Useless information. Ugh, this is always death. So, Leo, did you know dolphins actually sleep with one eye open? I did not know that. Dolphins, which are known for being one of the smartest animals in the world, is possibly because they can conserve their brain power. Because they must be on the lookout for predators. They've developed a, the trick of maintaining partial consciousness mm. even while their brain sleeps. So they've tested whether this kind of half sleep negatively impacts their alertness. No impact. Uh. They've managed to find a way to like keep one eye open and stay alert even though they're unconscious i feel like there have been times when i've been at a wedding <laughs> one, eye <open. laughs> one eye open it's the end of like a 13 hour day and you're just like what yeah i'm still i'm still you know aware of what's going on i'm still doing yeah. the thing but uh yeah uh leo i really appreciate you coming on where no, can people find you? you where can people um you can find me on instagram uh leandro underscore the underscore Silva underscore photography. Don't ask me why the underscore. I just had it since the beginning. I think I think Instagram wouldn't let you put spaces. Yes. So because it was so long, I'm like, you know, I have to break this up somehow. Um, and then you can find me at Leandro the Silva dot uh, com. So it's L E A N D R O D A S I L V A dot com. And I'll include those links uh, in the episode notes. Uh, you should definitely go check out his Instagram. If you're wondering about those signature shots, I think Reels has been very good to you because you yes. get to show off like the yeah. behind the scenes. Yep. Um, how like, I I construct it, how I, you know, light it. Um, and then you, ca- I think you can kind of get a sense of how, you know, everything is built. Because like a lot of people think like, or oh, is that a fake background or is that a, a real background? And, uh, you know, I always say, Though everything was there, like I didn't, I don't add anything in post. But I, if if I anything, I would remove stuff. Like I'll remove, um, you know, fire extinguisher. I, I remove, you know, fire alarms. Like right, things like the little that, thing, the exit signs, the exit signs. Yeah, um, you know, any, you know, I try to remove any debris, any petals. I do that all beforehand. Right. But if I miss something, I have to do that. Um, but you know, everything is done, you know, there. Cause as I want to, as try much to, in camera as possible. Yeah, like I, I'm not one of those, like, Oh, I'll just take this and put it together. But I try to like get lighting is all there. Like I don't, you know, there's no weights for me to add the light. Yeah. There's this whole thing of like, yeah, I think that some people are like, Oh, it's yeah, gotta be Photoshop. Like, yeah. yeah it, it, you gotta that, know what a layer is and you know how to uh, mask layer mask. And that's right. basically it. Yeah. Cause I, I, I've, I've watched your process. It's, yeah. it's, it's really, it's, like I said, it's not my style, but I really appreciate it. Like I guess that's because it's, I see what goes into it. I see yeah. like, you know, like, I think that there, there are things you can learn. Like I've learned not just from watching like your reels, but also from watching other people and going like, Oh yeah, that is that like something I didn't think of. And I think that we get too much into a curated, like what we see on social media and people like only think about what they like what their style is yeah. and they get like very like much blinders and you don't learn things that way. Yeah. Like I, I like to use the nerdy photographer account on Instagram. I use my stories to like, like, Hey, look at this big, like here's a post somebody else had that was really cool. Yeah. Like to try to like, Hey, this is something like it's not all the same stuff. Yeah. I like to but, look at like other, like other genre, genres of photography, like, like um, sports photography. Like, I love some of the stuff that you see. Even then, you see some of these documentary, like, photographers. Like, it's, it's amazing work. So, it's like, you know, you try to be inspired by, by, by a lot of this. So, I'm, like, looking at some of the light and, like, these sports stuff. And I'm like, wow, it's so cool. You see new things. Yeah. And then you it it affects you. It's like, insp- like, subconsciously, like, it, influences you. Yeah. Um, And, you know, it's like, oh, I, I like this. Like, I don't know why. And then it's like, you don't know. But it was because you, maybe you saw, like, this photo somewhere or even you look at like a landscape photo and you see like the sun coming through the trees yeah. and you see like the lighting hitting something and you're like wow how could i do that yeah 
but like have control over because yeah. I can't do it at a wedding. Like, yeah. I'm, like I'm not gonna just go. Or like, like I've seen like Lancey, I'm like, oh, it'd be so cool if we get like a bride and a groom in that space. Like, right, <laughs> right in here. Yeah. Just put it like, yeah, but you, like it starts making you think about the composition. Yeah. Like you start thinking like, why do I like that? Like, you, like yeah. what would be great about this? Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. I really no, appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And uh, um, You're welcome to come back anytime you yeah, want. You're awesome. right in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally uh, down the street. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Leandro Da Silva. You can find more of Leandro's photos in the episode notes, as well as where to find him on the interwebs. You can also follow The Nerdy Photographer on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at The Nerdy Photo. That's at The Nerdy Photo. Lots of photography tips, funny stories, and behind-the-scenes videos and photos on the various social platforms. If you want to support The Nerdy Photographer, click the link in the episode notes and get some merchandise. Or, you know, buy me a drink or do, you know, any number of other free things that don't involve money to help support the podcast. Speaking of buying a drink, where's that waiter? Hello there. Hi, I was wondering if I could order another uh, frozen beverage. Uh, actually, I am here to speak to you about your bill. Snug? Uh, bill? Well, the, uh, you know, the bartender didn't charge us for the first round, so we thought that the drinks were, you know, on the house since we've saved the universe multiple times. Oh, um, uh, uh, no. You've been here for three weeks, and you've accumulated... Quite a few charges. Huh. Is that so? Well, you know, I left my galactic credit card and the ship. I usually do the biometric scan for authorization while I'm sitting at the helm. Let me just take that bill with me. Until next time, everybody, stay safe and stay nerdy. Listen.